Thank you. Please sit down. Sit down. I want to welcome everybody who is here today to this unique occasion, a unique event that is dedicated to harnessing the potential of uh, ICT. And I think for me, the best point to start is talking about our tagline, tomorrow is here, right? When, during our campaign for office, we set out a blueprint for Enugu that are based on three critical factors. One was to grow the economy exponentially, grow it from $4.4 billion to $30 billion in eight years. That's a, a seven-fold growth, and that's a CAGR of 27%, a cumulated annual growth rate of 27%. That hasn't happened before. And I'll come back to why this is important. And then the second was to make Enugu number one destination for business, living, and tourism. And then the third, of course, is to eradicate poverty, to achieve a 0% rate in our poverty headcount index. Okay, so none of those was consistent with any data or any trend analysis. If you were to look at the growth trend, you will not understand how an economy that had largely grown perhaps at a marginal rate, maybe 2%, and suddenly you're talking about a 27% growth. So it didn't quite add up. But then we kept making reference to tomorrow is here. And in one of my engagements with the young people, I asked them, no, this was an engagement, I wanted to unpack this notion, this idea of tomorrow is here. And we asked the young people to help us unpack this whole idea of tomorrow is here. Now for us, we asked them to stretch their imagination as the Honorable Minister had asked us to do this morning. Just close your eyes and imagine the enable state you want to wake up into four years from now. Just stretch it. Uh, would I say that I, I was somewhat disappointed that the discussion we had after I had challenged the young ones to stretch their imagination and tell me the Enugu state they wanted to wake up into. The talk was a lot more on mundanity, which was a bit sad. But I can also, I could understand the trauma because we were also dealing with young people who have, over the years, come to expect the barest minimum from their leaders. So it was okay for them to wake up four years, turn on their tap, and the, the water is running, drive on a paved road, uh, push your switch, and the electricity is coming on. So those were the mundane things that our young people felt was important because of course they didn't quite have it. So at the minimum they needed those things. But I was thinking a lot beyond those mundanities. I was thinking about if we were going to grow a, an economy at the rate we have proposed, it means that we needed to do things differently. 
and we needed to invoke technology to help us to be able to actualize that. Otherwise, how else? So tomorrow is here, speaks to the immediacy of our actions. It means that we do not have room to procrastinate. We have to get done today what needs to be done. We cannot push for tomorrow what we could accomplish today. And then the second thing tomorrow is here speaks to is also the fact that the tomorrow we aspire to live in or we want to achieve, the things we want to achieve are within our grasp only to the extent that we innovate. Right? So that means that we would have to do what? Innovate and we have to um, essentially deploy technology in order for us to grow exponentially, in order for us to do things differently. And so, which is why this uh, Enugu Tech Festival is quite out. If you couldn't have found a better city to host this uh, festival. So I want to commend the organizer, the Honorable uh, Commissioner for Science, Technology and Innovation, Enugu State, for the spirit and the insight that birthed this brilliant uh, initiative. And as you have already heard from him, it is hoped that this is just the ladies edition and that this is a program, a conference that is going to be held annually. The truth is that technology is at the epicenter of what we do. And there is just no way we can grow or become anything relevant without it. And it's also responsible for why we gave ourselves that enormous goal, the enormous and uh, the humongous goals that we have uh, committed to the people of Enugu State. Even if you look at our growth uh, trajectory in the last two years, I mean, we came in, we had uh, an internally generated revenue of 25 billion Naira. This year, our projected internally generated revenue is going to be over 560 billion. And how, how are you able to achieve that without technology? It was through the help of technology that we're able to pluck all the leakages. We ensure that we capture all our revenues accurately and that payments are made through an e-platform. We, no we no longer have to accept cash. And so just locking those leakages meant that we saw a huge uh, um, shock, our revenue shot up, you know, tremendously. So again, it was also as a result of uh, technology that we were able to essentially operate in a more efficient manner. We were able to get things done quickly. If you look at the fact that we have migrated our operation to e-governance platform, okay. so things get done very quickly. Technology, again, what the Honorable Commissioner has alluded to, has helped us to also fast track our processes in terms of our land administration and management. You are now able to apply and obtain your title document within 72 hours. These are all powers of technology. And then again, let's even take it away because this idea of technology and the power of technology and what we can accomplish by deploying technology and innovation is something that I want the youth to be very mindful of. Because if you look at the world and the way things have gone on in the world, you see that we're no longer 
at an era where your pipeline activity is what is holding sway in the world today. We're talking about an era where people just sit down with great ideas, create platform, where they begin to essentially benefit from the upside of that platform. And the examples are replete. I mean, we have the case of uh, the ones that we're familiar with. We have uh, the Uber that came and did what? Disrupted the city taxes without owning a key. But today, they provide by far the largest traffic in terms of movement, just by creating a platform. So if you look at all the main city taxis or higher uh, or car rental companies, the valuation is not even a fraction of Uber. You can also extend that to Airbnb without owning a key, just by creating a platform. These guys have disrupted the businesses of those who own several brick and mortar assets. And just by doing what, with that only a key today, by far they provide the largest, they have more rooms to offer than any of your Marriott, Hilton, and all of what that's put together. You can even extend that to the one way that has just happened. Tesla. The reason you have Tesla having or hitting over a trillion dollar valuation today. It's largely because Tesla is valued as a tech company, which is why if you put the valuation of automobile companies like Mercedes, Volkswagen, GM, if you put them together, they are not up to the valuation of Tesla. That's again because of the power of technology. These other companies are valued as automobiles. Tesla is valued as a tech company. So we can see what just embracing technology can do. And to show that that is essentially where the future is. And as young people, this is possible. We're expanding our training, our digital training to cyber security, e-commerce, and today you no longer need to worry about your market analysis, talking about your market size and your market segment, because you have the entire world market in your palm, in your fingertip, just by creating e-commerce. And then again, we could go on and on to talk about the impact of technology in our lives. For us as government, we recognize that, and which is why we're investing hugely in education and not just building a smart green school brick and mortar. That is not the idea for us. It is what each smart school features, which is largely technology. You have a smart school that features a robotic lab, an AI lab, an artificial intelligence lab, um, a mechatronic lab, a CGI studios, and you know, the kids are able to be exposed, we're able to expose these young ones from age six from elementary one to these labs and to this technology language. And the hope for us is 10, 15 years from now, we're going to be able to produce young people that are employable. And for you that are already at this age, you're trainable. Because all you need to do is embrace what? Technology. And then get those core trainings that we are offering the Ministry of Communication, uh, Innovation, and Digital Economy is equally providing. So I am not going to keep us here for long, but let me say that this is a great idea. Code to code is one that I also welcome. Enugu has a rich history uh, as, as a city that gained preeminence over 115 years ago when a vast quantities of coal was discovered here. 115 years after, we're also leading the way. We want to make here that destination for innovation, that destination for technology. And so 
we welcome you all to Enugu, and I want to also say that we are going to be collaborating with those great ideas you have, those startups. As you may already know, we're constructing quite a number of common facility centers. We have an innovation and incubation center that is technology, and for us to know that the tomorrow we are aspiring to have is within our gra grasp just to the extent that we do what? Innovate. On, that, on this note, it is my pleasure to declare this Enugu Tech Festival open. Thank you very much. Please keep standing.